ladies and gentlemen, John Denver. The first time I had the privilege and the pleasure of working with George was on a film called Oh God. George was perfect for the part. In fact, uh, it was suggested that either George Burns had waited 80 years to play God or that God had waited a little longer to be played by George Burns. <laughs> it was uh, wintertime in California, the, the rainy season, when we made the film. And as usually the case, we did all of the exteriors first. We had a month of beautiful weather. The day that we moved into the big sound studios, uh, the sound stages at Warner Brothers, it started raining, and it rained nonstop for about two weeks. We joked about it, thought that maybe God did it. George just smiled and puffed on a cigar. <laughs> in the very last scene of the movie, you may remember that I'm talking to George uh, in, in, in a phone booth, and he's dressed up in this, this wonderful little safari outfit saying that he, uh, he wants to go to uh, Africa to spend some time with the animals, that, that he likes animals. Well, when we saw the dailies, there was this little dog in the scene behind George. Nobody knew where that dog came from. Nobody remembered him being there when we made the film. No one was responsible for that. There he was. We looked at one another, looked at George, and he smiled and puffed on his cigar. <laughs> He has such a clear sense of himself, a calmness and a strength that gives credibility to anything that he does. He's never trying to be something that he's not, and he's never being less than totally himself. Above all else, George is the world's greatest straight man. He's the ringmaster of every situation, a man with a rare gift for life and laughter, and it's a gift that he's given to the world. He has set an incredibly high standard, both as an artist and as a professional. And there are so very many of us in show business who would like to live up to George Burns. <laughs> On New York's Lower East Side, he said, our idea of being rich were the fine golds who had curtains. My friends and I started singing at Rosenzweig's candy store, he said. We called ourselves the Pee Wee Quartet. At seven, show business was already my life. break into vaudeville, George was willing to work with any act and any partner. Then a young actress came backstage looking for work. He asked her to play his straight man. No one laughed at my jokes, he said, but when Gracie opened her mouth, people fell out of their seats. Remember how we eloped? Mm -hmm. Remember how my mother ran down the ladder to show me how to do it? I was a happy man, said George. I loved the act, I loved the audience, and I loved Gracie. They were just another vaudeville team until they made a 1929 film short. Do you like to love? No. Like to kiss? No. <laughs> what do you like? Lamb chops. Lamb chops. Could you eat two big lamb chops alone? Alone? Oh, no, not alone. With potatoes, I could. You could? <laughs> George said that Gracie made the act, but the magic was in the teamwork. Hollywood thought so, too.
see which one of your brilliant relatives will we talk about tonight. Brilliant relatives? Yeah. Oh, 18 years on radio. I know I am. Then they took their act to a new medium. As always, George created the stories. He perfected the role of straight man until the comedy flowed effortlessly out of Gracie's innocent illogic. What, uh, what are you looking for? Oh, my purse. Gracie, don't tell me that you mislaid your purse. Mm -hmm. When people mislay things, it's pure carelessness. And not only that, it's stupid and it's unnecessary. Oh, well, don't worry, dear. I mislay things, too. <laughs> Gracie, I wish you'd stop being careless. Well, I'll try, dear. But I guess I just take after my cousin John. Do you know that he was so careless that he parked in the red zone? Suppose he got a ticket. But we don't know. The Russians won't let him write to it. <laughs> At the height of the show's success, Gracie decided to retire. I hadn't worked alone in 40 years, said George. I didn't know if I could be funny. Then Gracie died. Now, he thought, what can be left for an old vaudevillian like me? At the age of 80, he auditioned for a film called The Sunshine Boys and emerged a star. the same thing, isn't it? Enter or come in, what's the difference as long as you're in? The difference is we've done this sketch 11,000 times, and you always said come in. Suddenly, today, it's enter. Why today, after all these years, do you suddenly change it to enter? I'm trying to freshen up the act. Who asked you to freshen up the act? They asked for the doctor sketch, didn't they? The doctor sketch starts with come in and not enter. You want to freshen up something? Put some flowers in here. In the film Going in Style, he showed he could do more than make you laugh. After 85 years, I'm still in love with show business. And if you should survive to 105, think of all you'll derive out of being alive. And here's the best part, you got a head start. If you are among the very young at heart, if you are among the very young at heart, I want to tell you the most remarkable thing about George Burns. You know, it's hard to make people laugh for five minutes. I know. <laughs> and here George has been doing it for 78 years. To him, comedy is not a living, it's his life. And he certainly brightened ours. And I just want to tell you, this is a great crowd here tonight. He, he has many close personal memories of Washington. Not the city, the president. 
And I'll tell you, I've always believed in God and the president. I just no, never thought I'd see that both of them sitting in the same box. <laughs> but they look great. Two old actors looking for work. Let me tell you that the president's here every year, and he always asks Nancy, he says, do you think I'd be getting a Kennedy Center honor if I stuck to acting? And Nancy had to just say no. <laughs> you know, I did my second movie for Paramount in 1938. It was called College Swing, and the stars in it were George Burns and Gracie Allen. George's next film was in 1978, 40 years later when he won an Oscar for Sunshine Boys. Does he, does he know how to wait for the right script or not? <laughs> Burns and Allen were a wonderful team, this brilliant Irish actress and her cigar-smoking straight man. Gracie would be funny and George would puff on his cigar. Gracie would get the laughs and George would puff on his cigar. The audiences would cheer Gracie and George would puff on his cigar. They, they would get paid and George would take all the money. He had to. He needed it to buy more cigars. <laughs> George and Grace's comedy went straight to our hearts because it was filled with love for each other. And that was a love we all shared with them. And George, I think you know that sitting right up there in that box with you tonight, her heart filled with pride, is Gracie Allen. You know, before the show, George and the president had a long conversation. And the president wanted to know what it feels like to make a picture again after 40 years. <laughs> I understand he's thinking of doing a remake of Gone with the Wind, <laughs> which is a natural. I mean, for eight years, he's been telling Congress, frankly, my dears, I don't give a damn. <laughs> And George asked the president if he'd seen the Sunshine Boys, and the president said, no, I'll see Bush and Quail on Inauguration Day. <laughs> Let me tell you, George's career in recent years gives me hope. He got an Academy Award when he was 81, and I've been trying to borrow it ever since. <laughs> in truth, George earned this recognition for the joy he has given to our country. And I'm just here tonight to join so many others in saying to him, George, thanks for the laughs and for the memories. Thank you. George and Gracie's world of vaudeville gave America a new style of dancing. Well, the style changes over the decades, but the spirit remains the same. Ladies and gentlemen, two of Mr. Burns' admirers, Tommy Toon and Ann Reinking. Music for tavern was gone, amen. For science has found that the music goes round till it's back. 